In this session, I just want to quickly give you one technique. This is the most valuable piece of knowledge which I have that I can offer you that is going to allow you to scale your geometry nodes and your shader workflows far beyond how most people are already using proceduralism within Blender. And it's something that you already know how to do. It's a very simple technique and it's super easy to set up. Before we get to all that, just want to let you know about the procedural modeling courses which I've just released over on Node Group right now. At this moment, there is a 40% early bird discount still running. So head over there and grab a bargain while you still can. Those courses will teach you so much about just general procedural modeling, working with splines, working with meshes, working with loops, just generally building these really intricate complex systems. I know all of the exercises there are architectural, but the lessons are about general modeling skills. I just happen to like architecture. Go and grab yourself a bargain while the discount's still live. Without further ado, Let's jump into Blender here. I've got 4.2 open. It works with any version of Blender, but just for our example, I'm going to add a cube here. Let's add a new geometry nodes graph. And I want to make this cube change size. So I'll add a transform. And let's just join this onto our group input. If I set my group here, float, just so that we have even scaling there. Now, when I change this on my modifier, you can see that we're changing the size of our object. So great, not a problem. We have parameters. If I add another object, let's add Suzanne, and then let's say I want to have her move in the Z axis, combine X, Y, Z, I can join the Z into my group input there. Uh, oh, sorry, not in the scale, let's do this in the translation. Now I can move her up and down. Thing is, this parameter and that parameter are not controlled together. I could right click copy as new driver, paste that intro, paste that driver into Suzanne, and now they're both going to be controlled from here, but it's not super parametric. And if I then had more nested node groups, if I had a much more complex node tree, many more objects, potentially objects in different scenes, it's going to become really challenging for me to start driving and just generally setting all of those values up. I want a way of centralizing this in a way which is feeling native. If you followed me for long, then you will know that I use control groups in pretty much all of my courses and any of my larger tutorials. So let's come in here, just either of my node graphs. I'm just gonna drag a value off that combine X, Y, Z, control G to put it into a group, and I'm gonna delete everything except from the group output. This now has a control for Suzanne. If I tab out, I'm gonna name this group underscore controls, the underscore makes sure that it always turns up at the top of our list. Go back to our group for the cube and we will grab our controls group. I will plug this into the scale. Now, if I go in, you can see now we're controlling both simultaneously. Fantastic. Let's say I don't ever want it to go into the negative on the cube. Well, I don't have to do any fancy driver expressions. I can literally just add a math node maximum zero. So now we can go above zero, but it will stop at zero. So we can use the nodes that we're used to, to actually start setting some kind of value limits that we want based on the node graph in which we were using these. So let's take this a step further. And I know I said, I said that we didn't want to particularly do anything with drivers, but because we're doing a controls group, this actually makes it very easy if we do want to use something like shaders or anything like that. So I've just added a material to our cube. And now in this node graph, in our material, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to add a value off my roughness, control G to put it into a group, tab back out, and I'm going to call this one underscore controls underscore shader. So inside our shader version, let's copy as new driver from our geometry nodes controls, just so that's the main one, the main parameter. And we're going to paste that driver into our shader, we can use this into our roughness and maybe let's invert it with a subtract node just to give ourselves one minus that value for our metallic. Maybe we can make it red. Let's make that a bit clearer. We will add a map range in here. This is all pretty straightforward stuff, but let's go from 0.5 to two on our sizing. So now as we come back to zero, you can see that we now have a shiny object as we come up. There we go. We're affecting the metallic and the roughness from in here. We're not doing anything with store named attributes. So we're not dealing with any kind of RAM overhead or CPU overhead. 
we're just doing a driver. So it's a nice, simple, lightweight, data-oriented method of working. We, again, we have another object here. So perhaps we add a different material in here. We're gonna add that control shader group. Let's plug this through a mix RGB as the factor. And we can now mix between two colors. So let's go from blue to, uh, yeah, let's go for red. And again, we can come into our controls group here. And you can see as we increase that, we're having that effect. Multiple different objects, multiple different node trees, multiple different shaders. And yet we have one central parameter which is working across all of it. This is obviously a very basic example, but let's have a look at how we can use it in a much more complex, involved way. This is the model from the Solar Trees Marketplace course linked down in the description. This is one of the new procedural modeling courses which I've made recently. This has a fairly large node tree. As you can see, it's got multiple things going on. Repeat zones, we've got multiple repeat zones. We've got lots of different bits of geometry being created here. It would be really challenging to have across all these places one central control system that is all just driven by the group input of your node graph, especially because, because we are using a group, I can actually have some geometry being imported within this group and then you know plugged into multiple places in the node tree rather than needing to duplicate all of this. And because it's a data block, because everything inside this node graph is instanced, everywhere you have a node group, you have exactly the same data. If I wanna change my canopy points or my column points, I can do so globally from inside this group. So we have all of these settings. And a little extra piece that we have in here, what happens if you want to have something like a float curve, perhaps you're using it in multiple places and you want there to be just one curve that you change and it precipitates that change in every way you use that float curve. Well, put it inside a node group. So if we just view the base spoke model, if I were to change something, for example, the, the canopy curvature, you can see that we're affecting the way that these regions are joining together. What if we wanted to change the float curve in here? that's gonna affect the bunching of spokes towards their central positions along the joints or away from if we wanted them. Let me show you another one. We have the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport column here. Beautiful column, really interesting design. Again, this is one of the courses, go check it out. Lots of different geometry nodes going on here. We have three different node graphs. Each one needs to be controlled centrally because otherwise I'm gonna to have to come into all of these places and start tweaking things in different places it's gonna become a pain. But if I can just come into this controls group and I can say, oh, you know what? I want my column corner to be uh, zero. I want these to be sharp corners. Or maybe I want my column corner to increase the radius and just give me a little bit more flexibility up there. We can change our panel gap, which is in one of our different node graphs. All of this stuff is coming from a central controls group. And you can see that I'm using this in 10 different places across multiple node graphs. In fact, you know what? Let me show you one more from our Boyd's course, our simulation nodes course, again, over on node group, you can see that we have these sorts of flying creatures, in this case cones, and they're just sort of floating around here, creating nice patterns. How deep does the rabbit hole go? We are in our Boyd simulation on the top level. We have a simulation node in here. We have collision logic, we have collision steps, we have Boyd collisions, and in here we can see that we have our controls group. So. I'm able to change all of my controls at this level, you know, manually. Or what would be much more useful is if I didn't always have to go looking for where those parameters are. If I could just find wherever I need them, access to that information. And again, collider group is going through this control group. So if I have my collider set in multiple different node groups, perhaps nested node groups, then again, we're not needing to find those individual things every time I want to update it. We have inside one node group, one data block, it's instanced everywhere. It means that if you change one thing in one place, it changes it for everyone else. This is one of those workflows that I wish I'd known much earlier, but better late than never. I hope it's useful to you. If you've been on any of my courses, you'll know that this is something I use pretty extensively. If you're just doing one-off experiments, there's probably no need for this workflow. You can just stick stuff onto a group input or even just value nodes that are scattered around your node tree. But as soon as it comes to something where you're using multiple objects, multiple node graphs, I really do believe that this is one of those workflows that is going to take you from being reasonable at geometry nodes to basically removing the ceiling on what you can achieve. Good luck. I hope this has been useful. Go check out my courses while there's still a discount on them for this weekend. And I will catch you in another tutorial real soon. Take care.